Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious in the hot summer sun. Yes, siree. Marty Winkle and I are here in our American Space Museum that's closed till August 8th. Monday will reopen. They're just putting down the new floor carpet in our museum, and but we, we, we charge on. Though the museum's closed, we know that you love learn about space history. we got a great program together today about the dog days of summer. All right. And why are they called the dog days? Is your pooch laying around panting all the time? Is that why we call them the dog days of summer? Well, you're going to stay curious and find out about that. And the rest of the week, our lineup's going to include shuttles of the month on Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got astronaut John David Bartow, who was a scientist on STS-51F in 1985, one of the pioneering scientists on our space shuttle program. John David Bartow will be in the studio here with me and Marty on Wednesday. And Thursday will be quite an interesting day of space history. Everything from uh, sur surveyors on the moon to the Apollo 15 getting ready to launch to the, the fourth lunar landing. And uh, then Friday, Tales of the White Room with Triple T. So glad that you're with us and glad that you support our American Space Museum nonprofit. After all, we preserve the birth of America's space age right here in Brevard County. We are literally nine miles away from the launch pads of Cape Canaveral and Cape Kennedy. And on August 18th, they're going to haul out Artemis 1 SLS rocket and fired off to the moon on August 29th. So we'll be doing a lot of episodes about that. So stay curious. Please watch us on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Spotify, and Twitch. I watched one on Twitch the other day, Marty. Uh, and uh, we look as good on Twitch as we do on YouTube. So uh, actually, you can't get Marty in front of the camera much, but uh, and I guess I look okay. So, But we're glad that you're with us today. And uh, let's just kick it off here a little bit of like, boy, is it hot out and that big old sun out there burning down. But Marty, would you believe that the Earth is farthest away from the sun in July and closest in uh, January? Well, uh, Cliff Watson would believe that because he's our my personal friend and stay curious watcher down in Pomona, Australia. And they're having winter. We can't forget about south of the equator. It's winter time in Brazil and Australia and South America. Uh, so we are actually 94 and a half million miles away from the sun right now. And in January, we're as close as 91.3. Just a little bit of an ellipse. So being close to the sun doesn't make us any hotter. The tilt of the earth, that 24 and a half degree Axis tilt, something knocked us over way back when. That's what causes the dog days of summer. Look at that happy pooch there, enjoying a little mimosa maybe there in the summertime. Uh, these punishingly hot summer days get their name from the ancient belief that the brightest star in the sky, not from, uh, uh, that's where we get the dog days of summer, not from dogs' tendency to be lazy in the heat, all right? But for many of us, the dog days evoke those summer days that are so devastatingly hot that even dogs lie around panting on asphalt. And the hot in the sun, is we feel the heat because, again, the Earth is tilted towards the sun in our orbit going around the sun. So we're getting more direct rays than we get, all right? Think about the beaches being filled up. This weekend and all weekends during the summer. Anywhere there's a little bit of water, there's going to be some people congregating around to splash around in it, Marty. And, of course, our dogs are going to be tired, dog tired, right? So uh, I'm doing things a little bit old school here today because we didn't get to print stuff out and computers in our office. I know it looks the same to you, but I am uh, admits my more than my usual share of chaos of papers and a computer over here and so forth to help you stay curious today. But here's what's going on and why it's so hot in the summer is because as we're tilted towards the sun, the sun's path is much higher in the sky. 
In the winter, we're tilted away from the sun and we get indirect rays and the sun's path is much lower. Think about you all that love to go sunbathing. You're not going to catch a tan at 10 in the morning. All right. That's when you go out to set up to get tan at 10 in the morning. Then you're going to get a tan at six at night either. The sun's up there, uh, you know, till eight o'clock at night in the summertime. But at six o'clock, you're not going to get tan. Why? Because the sun's low and it's coming to you at an angle. And though it, it, that, that sunlight is traveling a lot further than when it's directly overhead from like 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock when those bright rays are shining down and getting you most uh, most of the heat going on. So that is one of the, the, the keys to it there. But still, we love to get our, our pets involved with our lives. Look at this uh, Alaskan uh, uh, pup there out there in the uh, on a big rubber ducky there, Marty. And of course, I'm a dachshund guy. I've loved dachshund, had one for a long time. There's my little beanie weenie getting his suntan on out there with a coconut drink. Imagine that. That's right. Those dachshunds have class, okay? But uh, really, we get this dog days of summer really originated with the Egyptians, all right? And, and how did the Egyptians start all this? Well, they were very big star watchers, okay? And... Uh, uh, they would would plot the, the the nighttime stars like the winter stars and figure out that those stars were in the daytime sky. All right. They were smart enough to figure that out. And when they laid around and, and played chess or whatever games they play in Egypt, uh, the hot dog days, they believed, were because of the brightest star in the sky. And this is it called Cirrus. Well, those of you that know Cirrus know that it is a winter star. That's right. It's low in the southern horizon for uh, uh, for Larry Pushker up there and Dave Stenge in Michigan. It's way, we're real low to the horizon. But in Egypt, closer to the equator, this star would be more directly overhead in the wintertime. And it was a very important, important star because when they saw it first rising in the twilight of the morning, which was springtime, the Nile would flood. What was important about the Nile flooding? Water. And so the crops were planted in the arid desert in the spring, of course. And when they saw this star rising before the, the, the sun blotted it out, they knew they thought it had something to do with its crops. And they thought that, and here is Cirrus in Canis Major, the big dog. That's what this constellation is called. It looks like a stick figure of a man with Cirrus, the head of the the, uh, the man. Now, Cirrus is the brightest star at about minus one and a half magnitude, but the planets Jupiter and Venus are always brighter than Cirrus. All right. And, and Venus is always the third brightest thing in the sky behind the sun and the moon, and then Venus, and then Jupiter. And then sometimes Mars, and Mars will be the fourth, fifth brightest object in the sky this uh, October uh, through January when it comes close to Earth. And we'll be looking and talking a lot about Mars this uh, winter, particularly the, uh, Christmas, uh, first week of December, when it's at its closest point to the Earth, about 40 million miles away. Right now it's about 150 million miles away. But it's up there, and a dim red star rises about 11 o'clock at night. So Canis Major, the big dog, and here's the outline of the dog in classical constellation lore. All right. And he is one of two dogs that Orion the Hunter takes with him hunting. Okay. The other dog star is Procyon and Canis Minor, the little dog. So you got the big dog and the little dog. Cirrus is the brightest star in Canis Major, and Procyon is the brightest star in uh, the little dog, Canis Minor. Now, that other star, Betelgeuse of Orion, you see, Betelgeuse in Arabic actually means armpit of the giant, because that's what it is in mythology lore. And uh, so Betelgeuse, Procyon, and Cirrus form a triangle that's called the Winter Triangle. And 
There's there there it is, Canis Major again. So that's where we get the dog, and the it is called the Dog Star. All right, and there we are, another close up of the way this looks in the the middle of uh, January February looking south. But the ancient Egyptians figured out that this star is directly overhead uh, during the summertime. So because it was so bright and the Egyptians were naive to what stars were, except they just thought of them as a hot inferno, that that light was going to be adding heat to the earth. Heat from that star was adding the heat from the sun, and that's why it was so hot during the summertime, and thus the dog days of summer from around July, the 1st of July to the middle of August. And now you know all about the dog days of summer in there. And Marty, we got any comments or questions? Nope. Well, we are bringing you a very short program today, but that's okay sometimes as uh, we've got uh, a, a whole lot of other things that you're going to enjoy this weekend, including tomorrow. We're going to talk about the uh, return to launch of STS-114 and uh, Commander Eileen Collins. And we're going to, uh, uh, like I said, Wednesday, we'll have astronaut John David Bartow and uh, Mikey Haddad, payload expert, with another scientist whose name I apologize I didn't bring with me. Uh, we'll be on Wednesday to talk about Space Lab, uh, the 19th mission in the shuttle era, uh, Columbia uh, Challenger's eighth flight. So while we're here at the dog days of summer, we want to say hi to Ophelia Soderold in Normandy, France. Dave Stangy, thank you for watching. Uh, it's a strange, Dave Stangy, how it's been hotter in Michigan some days than it has been here in uh, Florida. But that's why we're a peninsula, get that breeze going occasionally. Keith Soule, thank you for being a faithful watcher. And William Whitney, uh, William Whiting, thank you, William Whiting, for staying curious with us today. So, yes, we're getting excited about Artemis launching uh, the uncrewed Orion capsule with a bunch of mannequins in it. It's actually got a Snoopy uh, stuffed animal in it that's going to be their zero-G indicator. And they're expected to roll out the SLS rocket on uh, April, uh, August 11th. And uh, that will probably be in the evening time because there's less chance of thunderstorms in the evening after the, the heat of the day boils off those day. Uh, th afternoon thunderstorms but the launch is now scheduled for august 29th at 8 30 a.m all right so like some of the launch photographers are talking about they're going to roll it out there for 11 days at the height of hurricane season with no protection at all it takes about eight hours to get it out there so if we have a hurricane it'll take a good eight hours to bring it back in but they're on top of it and definitely nasa's got the best weather service in the world so we're getting excited about that, and we will be open August 8th, like I said, uh, and uh, uh, our computers are down and things like that, so I wasn't able to, to line up some pictures. I've been posting pictures from my smartphone, so check us out on Facebook with that. So, Marty, thank you for another smooth Streamlabs show, and uh, we thank all of our supporters out there, particularly Mr. Chris Callie. Uh, we have uh, his T-shirts for sale. Uh, go to our Facebook page, uh, and we'll be promoting those. Those first T-shirts will be coming out of the printer later this week, so we can start showing them off and really start selling them. So uh, a big fundraiser to help us defray a little bit of our uh, cash flow that we're losing because we're closed, uh, and we're not getting that attendance money. So, again, thank you for supporting us all that you can. And uh, again, we are closed. We'll be open Monday, August 8th. And I'll be back with you tomorrow. I'm Mark Marquette. So come back and stay curious tomorrow so we can what? Bridge the space between us.